Hello, everyone, and welcome on behalf of the ASG to, uh, to our sixth virtual support group meeting. It's our third for our ATTR patients. All our virtual meetings can be viewed on our website, amyloidosissupport.org. This one should be up in about a week or two. We hope to be able to resume live meetings in 2022. And if things go real well with the vaccine, maybe we'll be able to slip a few in in the fall of 2021, but we're not counting on that yet. We realize that the main thing lacking from our webinars, these virtual meetings, is the patient-to-patient -patient contact, and we know that's really important. So we do urge you to join our Facebook group where we have more than 1,500 ATTR patients. We have one group for wild type and one group for hereditary TTR as well. In the control room today, we are again joined by, our, by ASG's executive director, Paula Schmidt, Hi, everyone. And our special projects director, Bob Gibson. Hello, everybody. Hope you have a good webinar today. I think it's going to be really good. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm really excited. This is different for sure. Uh, you won't be able to po post comments in the chat, but please do check it out um, during the break as there will be some reference links that will be posted. Uh, those of you that emailed in questions, there will be several times during the webinar where we will have Q&A with our physicians and pharma friends. So um, you'll, you'll hopefully get your question answered. If not, anyone that emailed in questions, we will, uh, after the webinar, forward any unanswered questions to our physicians and pharma, and then we will email you privately your answers, okay? Um, our presenters today, and we'll, sh we'll show you some slides, we're very proud. What, uh, our first presenter is Dr. Brett Sperry from St. Luke's in Kansas City. And then after Dr. Brett Sperry, we'll have Dr. Akshay Vaishna from El Nilem. And then Dr. Gustavo Bichelli from Ionis. Dr. Adam Castaño from Pfizer. Dr. Alan Cohen from Eidos. Dr. Michael Roberts from Carino. Dr. Je oh, I, I'm, I shouldn't promote him to doctor yet, right? Jeffrey Chahelski from Intellia. Jocelyn Ashford from Eidos. And Dr. Jonathan Wall from the University of Tennessee. Other panelists joining us today will be Dr. Shafiq Karam from the University of Pennsylvania, a familiar face to all of us, right? Dr. Natasha Sarswat from the University of Chicago. She's, had the, she's on call at the ICU today, so I'm not sure how much we'll see of Dr. Sarswat. And Lori Lauder from El Nilem. Craig Spolsky from Pfizer. Ken Bush from Ionis. And Joe Shuck from Pfizer. We'll uh, have a brief survey for you after the webinar is over, or if you decide to leave early, that, that survey will be ma made available to you as well. And we do urge you to take a few minutes and fill it out for us. It will be very helpful. Okay, so now let's hear from uh, our first presenter, Dr. Brett Sperry. Dr. Sperry? All right, um, let me pull up my slides here. All right, well, thanks Muriel and uh, thanks uh, to the rest of the amyloidosis support group team for inviting me to speak at this. I think this is a really nice uh, few hours that, that they have planned here for you. And I was tasked to spend about five or so minutes talking about uh, just an overview of ATTR cardiac amyloidosis to set the stage for things. Um, obviously this is a can be a full hour plus talk in and of itself. And so, um, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm thinking about this as a level two course. I think a lot of you have, have been to support group meetings and have been to uh, the some of the virtual meetings here. And so this is just an overview of a ATTR cardiac amyloidosis and specifically um, how the molecule forms and um, where the different treatment options are to set the stage again for the rest of the talks uh, later today.
So just to, uh, you know, normally we start these meetings with the video and I'm sure you've all seen the video, but just as an overview of the two main types of amyloidosis, you have light chain AL amyloidosis, which are uh, the problem are immunoglobulin light chains made from the bone marrow, specifically plasma cells that then um, can deposit, aggregate and deposit into various tissues. And then you have ATTR, transthyretin amyloidosis, which um, comes from the TTR protein made in the liver um, that then similarly uh, can deposit into various organs causing organ dysfunction. There are other types of amyloidosis, which um, some of you on the call may have, or certainly people uh, who come to the support meetings have these various other types of amyloidosis. But these are the, these are the two main ones that we think about for systemic amyloidosis. And we're going to be focusing mostly or all uh, this this uh, these next few hours on TTR or transthyretin. So this is a this is a protein. It's a it's a um, homotetramer. So you you probably can't see my mouse, but you have the yellow, blue, uh, green, and red are each individual monomers or portions of the protein that then combine to form this one tetrameric protein. Um, uh, this is also called or was previously called prealbumin. So if you've ever had a prealbumin level checked or um, if your doctor is checking your prealbumin level to, to look at response to therapy, that's what you're getting. You're actually getting a transthyretin level. Um, there, are, there are different types of, um, of ATTR amyloidosis. There's hereditary and uh, there's wild type. And wild type just means that the genetic code is uh, the the most common code that's that's out there coding this protein, um, and then hereditary means there's a genetic difference leading to potentially some instability in the protein that leads to amyloidosis, and we'll get to that in the next slides. So symptoms um, of ATTR amyloidosis. Um, I don't have to explain these to people in the audience. Probably a heart failure, kidney failure, potentially. Uh, neuropathy, tendon ligament problems that we think of carpal tunnel syndrome, spinal stenosis, bicep tendon rupture, and trigger finger. And then ways that we diagnose this as a cardiologist, certainly we're looking at EKG, um, electrocardiogram, cardiac MRI, technetium pyrophosphate scan. Of course, getting the blood work to evaluate for AL amyloidosis to make sure that's not an issue. And then uh, for, on the neuropathy side, we look at EMG and nerve conduction studies as well. And then biopsy. Um, a lot of the times now for cardiac, we can make this diagnosis based on the blood work and on a technetium pyrophosphate scan alone without needing a biopsy. Um, but some patients may have a biopsy uh, or may need a biopsy depending upon uh, how the diagnostic algorithm progresses to get a, a real firm diagnosis of that. And that can be a biopsy of Several things in the heart we think about, in cardiac amyloidosis, we think about a biopsy of the heart. So this is a schematic here, and let me just direct you to what you're looking at. So in this box is a cell in the liver that creates um, this, eventually this TTR protein. And you see on the bottom left, um, TTR tetramer. So this on the bottom left is the actual protein. Um, this can then, you can see, go, go rightwards in the picture, then break down into monomers and eventually amyloid fibrils that can deposit in the heart here is depicted, but also the nerves and potentially some other organs. Before this protein is made, you see on the top left is the DNA that then is transcribed into messenger RNA which is then translated into the protein. So before the protein is made, it has to get made from this, uh, from, from this DNA. Um, messenger RNA is something that is that uh, some people may be more aware of this year because all of these vaccines for coronavirus are mRNA vaccines. Well, at least the, the two, two main ones are mRNA vaccines. So you're, you're being injected with um, mRNA here that then goes into your own cells, then your cells create um, the spike protein on the on the the spike protein, which then your immune system recognizes, and you train your immune system in order to 
fight off uh, coronavirus. So that's what these mRNA vaccines are doing. And similarly, um, the mRNA here for that eventually creates the TTR, then event you know eventually creates this this protein. And so the the concept there is, I think, is uh, is something that we're hearing a lot about in the news now. So um, what are some targets for, oh, let, yeah, sorry, let's first do this. So um, the DNA can be wild type and uh, you can see these strands of DNA have individual letters here, which are nucleotides. Um, and so each, each one of these letters, wild type means that you have the normal uh, protein that everyone else or that most other people have. A point mutation means that one of these here, the T changes into a C um, in this example, but one of these one of these things changes and that can eventually change how the protein is, is structured. So this is the difference between the wild type and the hereditary. So what are some areas that medications can block? Well, we have stabilizers that block this first first step in amyloid fibril creation. And so they bind to the TTR tetramer and prevent that from breaking down eventually into monomers and fibrils and going into the heart. You have silencers, which work in, this, in, the, uh, in the cells, blocking the messenger RNA from uh, eventually being translated into the protein. And then uh, what we would, what we have hope for is medications um, that can actually get into the fibrils and work on the end organs, work on the heart or nerves or wherever to disrupt some of these fibrils um, and clear some of the amyloid that has already been deposited. So these are, these are three of the main areas of medication development. And you'll see over the course of the next few hours, um, representatives from each of these companies talk about their medications and, and how they work. And so that's that's all I have, just uh, as a, an overview here of the few things um, going into ATTR, and again, trying to set the stage for the rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Sperry. That was very helpful, and we really appreciate it. And Dr. Sperry will be around, folks, for the Q&A, so uh, hopefully you'll be around for the entire time, Dr. Sperry. We really need you today. Thanks. <laughs> okay, great.